So they opened you up and discovered it was very extensive underneath. Yeah, very. If I would have waited a day longer, I would have been dead. Our next patient is named Stephanie, and she had a breast augmentation at age 17. You had breast augmentation very young. Yeah. Did you have a breast deformity? Um, yeah, they were real small, but they were very pointy. So it wasn't tubers, it sounds like. No. It was just a small, yeah. small breast. From the sound of it, Stephanie didn't have a breast deformity. She just had small breasts. What kind of symptoms are you having? Burning. Burning? Yeah. I'm taking care of my kids. It's, it's hard to pick them up sometimes. When he's at work and, like, taking them to t-ball practice, it's hard for me to get all three kids out in the stroller. It, it's, it hurts me. Why don't we go in and do a really careful examination and see if we can figure this thing out? OK. OK? Thank you. For Stephanie's surgery today, I'll first make incisions on the bottom of her areolas. Then I'll open up the breast pockets, assess the quality of her tissue, and weigh whether or not I'll need to release her muscle, which I suspect I will. Next, I'll remove her old implants and replace them with a new pair, which will hopefully relieve Stephanie of her pain and give her a more normal looking breast shape. She's gonna be so happy. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Let's close! Yes! Hi, Mommy! Hi! <laughs> what do you think, babe? Oh my gosh, you look amazing. Damn, she looks so good. Prior to the surgery, my breasts were like saggy baggies. Now I'm able to live an active life with my family, and it's amazing. Should we go down there and check out the water? Yeah. Now that I'm fixed and the pain's gone, I'm just really excited to do new things with my family, and just makes me really excited for the future. Here comes a big one. <laughs> Can you please send in Tatiana? When I was uh, about 15, I ended up having my son. Okay. So my breast, you know, I breastfed, so they got bigger, they got saggy. And then I had my daughter at 17, and same thing happened, and then I realized, you know, I just want to lift. What did the doctor say? So he was like, well, you can't just get a lift because your breasts are going to look ugly. You Why? Need, you need an implant for the fullness. Okay. What else did he say? You need a tummy tuck, too. And I was like, uh, really? Uh, and also, I can do lipo. Kidding me. How much was the charge for all of those things? 6000 For all Everything? of it? Yeah. Yeah, he got me good. To take an impressionable 20-year-old who comes in for one type of procedure and then try to add on additional procedures is unbelievably not cool. In fact, the only way to describe it is predatory. I started feeling very weak. I was going to school at the time. I skipped class to go to the hospital, and they admitted me. They told me, your doctor didn't clean his utensils right, so all your body is getting infected now. You're gonna need surgery today. So you were septic. I didn't know I was gonna be getting cut hip to hip. So they opened you up and discovered it was very extensive underneath. Yeah, very. If I would've waited a day longer, I would've been dead. So let's go in the exam room and figure out what the tissue's like and what your options are. You could theoretically have your areolas reduced, and that vertical scar removed. That would have a lower risk than if you did a more formal mastopexy, which is a breast lift operation where you had the areolas removed, you had this scar removed, and then you had them slightly taken apart to give you some shaping to move the breast tissue that you do have, which is substantial, up into this area. Which one of those sounds better to you? Lifting it up. You want to do that. Now, whether or not I can make you a belly button really depends on what's at the bottom of that hole. Then you're going to need a full, regular, revisional tummy tuck, which means remove the scar, elevate up that loose skin, tighten the muscle, try to find a belly button, pull the excess skin down and remove it. The problem with that is that elevates the risk. So tummy tucks are among the riskiest procedures in plastic surgery, mainly because so much skin is elevated, so much blood supply is disrupted. Is that what you want to do? I'm ready to take the risk. You're a risk taker, you got it. <laughs> For Tatiana's surgery, I'll start by downsizing her areolas and perform a scar revision by cutting out the previous scar in her breasts. Then I will manipulate her breast tissue and perform a breast lift. Next, I'll move on to her stomach by making an incision across her lower abdomen, elevating up the abdominal wall to see if I can find her belly button. Next, I'll tighten her abdominal muscles, remove her scar and excess skin, and hopefully pull her belly button through before closing her up. Let's close it up. Let's go home. Closing music, please. 
look beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Before my surgery, my mommy makeover was more of a mommy massacre. I love my body now, and I can finally say goodbye to the maxi pads. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Let me show you. Oh, jeepers, creepers. So she lost Jeez. all of the Jeez. skin Jeez. between her belly button and her pubic hairline. Yeah, it's a tough case. Why don't you bring Crystal in and let's figure out what happened and what we can do about okay. it. Okay. Crystal, what happened? So I had two pregnancies. I gained a lot of weight. And at that time, my husband was like cheating on me a lot. Cheating on you a lot? Yeah. So I wanted to get sexy. Like, so I was looking into mommy makeovers. Yeah. And a fat transfer. To? My butt. OK, so a Brazilian my, butt lift. Right. So I saw a doctor in Houston. He said $30,000. It's probably about right. That's about right. So I said, I'm never going to have that type of money. Of money. Mm -hmm. Right. And he said, I have a colleague that operates in Mexico. So we saw him. He told me everything I wanted to hear for $10,000. Good deal. I, I had to go to Mexico, though. Yeah. We go into the surgery, and as soon as I woke up, I had dead skin. Oh, right away? Yes, right away. And he is cutting me. I, I can't feel. We're cutting the skin. All of it. He was just cutting and cutting. So I kept asking him, I have MRSA. He told my mom that I needed to stay off the internet, that I was delusional. This is right up there is one of the craziest stories we've ever heard. And you yeah. weren't on antibiotics? No. no oh. Where was the lipo marked? Um, my back fat. And I wanted lipo here, so he marked that here. Did you lipo here and here? Yeah. And did it tell me to talk at the same yeah. time? Yeah. You never liposuction this. It is killing the oxygen delivery system to the skin, and it predictably will die instantly. Right. You know, if 20 surgeons are telling you it's not possible, I got news for you. 20 surgeons may be wrong. I'll begin crystal surgery by making an incision across her lower abdomen to recreate the original defect. Next, I'll carefully elevate her extremely thin abdominal wall tissue, remove the excess skin, and then close the defect once and for all. Finally, I'll create a new belly button and Crystal will have a stomach as pretty as her smile. Crystal surgery technically went very well, but I don't know if it went physiologically very well. Time will tell, it's gonna either be blue and black tomorrow, or it's going to be pink and alive. And I'm hoping for alive. Mommy! Oh, my God! You look good, man. It feels great to see Crystal uh, confident, smiling. It's a blessing. Can we thank Dr. Dubrow for being lucky number 21? And yes, yeah, thank, thank, you, thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Dubrow. Dubrow. Before my surgery, my stomach looked like a Christmas tree. I had a huge gap in my abdomen, and it made me hide from my family. But now, thanks to Dr. Dubrow, I have a flat stomach that I love showing off. My family and I have never been closer, and I can't stop smiling for all the right reasons. The next patient is a patient named Crystal, who had a series of operations. So, very cute girl, very nice figure. Yes. She almost has one. That is gangrene, basically one oh. step away from flesh-eating disease. These are some of the worst complications that I've seen in a long time. How could the doctor let this happen? So you went with the idea of having your breasts done and a tummy tuck for stretch marks primarily. Yes. He told me, oh, no, I will, I'll take all of your stretch marks off. What did you want to have done with your breasts? Well, I had tubular breath. How did they put the implants in? I didn't see any incisions on No, he put the implants in through my abdomen. So the next day, the nurse wakes me up and she says, shower time. Showered you the next day? They showered me the next day. So there and you go. There's, there's one of the reasons why cold you cold water. Within 24 hours, they washed you off in fresh wounds. Contaminated just automatically. Wow. You're going to need what's called a synmastia repair. You're going to need a recreation of the pockets. You're going to need a fixing of your tubular deformity. You're going to need to have a completely new tummy tuck. So uh, I'm willing to go down this road and tackle with you. This is not going to be easy. The risk of complication is very high. I would only trust you. I appreciate that, but you've shown your ability to make good decisions in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Today for crystal surgery, I'll correct the semasty in her chest by removing her old implants and then create newly separated breast pockets. Then I'll fix her tubular breast deformity by making releasing incisions inside her breast tissue and put in implants. Next, I'll make an incision at the bottom of her abdomen and remove the excess skin, which will both reduce her stretch marks and lower her outdated tummy duck scar. I 
feel great. I don't need to worry about a cover up. I don't need to worry about a one piece. You look amazing. I feel amazing. Mm -hmm.